Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the control module for our FT tenant. Now our control module is going to house either our receiver or our FT or a light. It's also going to be where all of our connections are made for our service. The neat thing about this control module is it can be interchanged between different airplanes. So if you're in a classroom, you don't have to have one control module per student. You can actually interchange those. Now the really cool thing about the FT tenant is we design it in a way that if you follow along with our build videos and you make the connections the way we tell you to with the servo arm placement and also the direction of our control horns, you're not going to have to do any reversing on your FT Aura 5. The FT Aura 5 is a fantastic solution for this because not only are you getting things like launch assist and level assist, but you're also going to get the benefit of having a better flight experience even on windier days. The materials we're going to need for this is going to be our main flight control module box right here, our FT Aura 5, and also our satellite receiver. If you wish, you can even use this little foam pad that's included with your FT Aura 5 as well. For tools, we're going to be using our hot glue gun and a utility blade. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be building our control module box. Before we get started, we're going to weed out the foam in the sections that you see right here. The easiest way to weed out the foam is to bend it over 180 degrees and then just crack along the score lines. Once we've done that, you can simply rotate this out and the foam should come right off in your hands. If the foam doesn't release easy, you can take your utility blade and gently score just a little bit deeper, making sure that you don't go through the paper. If you do accidentally go through the paper, not to worry. All you simply need to do is repair the other side with a small piece of tape. Let's go ahead and clear out these channels now. If any foam accidentally remains in this channel, you can easily remove it with a razor blade or even with your fingernail. Now with all the channels removed, your piece should look just like what you see here in the video. The first step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be practicing what we call a C-fold. A C-fold is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to basically make a C with our piece of foam. You're going to notice that when we do a C-fold, that the cavity is just wide enough to give us a nice finished surface on the top side of your pot. Once we practice that, we can take our hot glue gun, we're going to put a thin bead of glue right on this section and a very thin bead of glue on the paper. Keep in mind that the paper is going to pass through the heat even easier, so make sure you don't burn your hands. We'll fold that over, and what we're focusing is on the bottom section to make sure that's nice and flush, just like you see here. Now that the glue is fully dry, we're going to go ahead and test fit the other side. We always make sure we do a test fit before we glue any of our pieces, just to make sure everything fits properly. And same process as before. A little bit of glue, really thin bead of glue on the paper, and fold it over. Going to line up that bottom edge, make it nice and flush, and then press down for about 30 to 40 seconds. Now that we have our C folds done, our next fold is going to be an A fold. A fold is where the side plate is above the bottom plate. To do a proper A fold, we're going to make sure that the side plate, which is this right here, is firmly against the table. Now we're going to rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees and make sure that we have no resistance or any foam keeping us from going a full 90 degrees. This is also a great time to bring in a triangle square if you wish, just to make sure that everything stays perpendicular to the table. Now that we've practiced our fold, we're going to focus the majority of our glue starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge on both pieces that are going to meet up with the bottom plate. Now we're going to go right down again. I'm going to hold the side plate against the table. We're going to rotate it up 90 degrees. Now I can take my triangle square and press it firmly against the piece. Give this about 30-40 seconds to fully dry. Now that's done. We're going to do the same process on the other side. Again, the side plate is against the table. We're going to rotate up the bottom plate, pressing it firmly against the table 90 degrees, making sure that there's no resistance keeping us from doing so. Once we're happy with that, a bead of glue right on the bottom of the side plates. Again, the side plate goes against the table. We're going to press using the table as our friend, down nice and firm, hold up to 90. Again, we can even use our triangle square to make sure everything stays nice and square. Whenever we're doing A folds, B folds, or even C folds, we never want to try to do that holding it in midair. We always want to use the table as our friend and work on the table. This gives us the ability to get nice clean edges and also make sure everything stays nice and true. Now at this point, our control module box is now complete. We're ready to install our FT Aura 5. Now if you choose to use a conventional receiver, the receiver is simply going to mount right down in this area just like you see here. If you're using the FT Aura 5, you're going to notice a little tiny box that's cut out. That box is to help us align with the bottom of the switch plate right here. It's going to also make sure that we mount our FT Aura 5 in the proper orientation. It's really important whenever you mount an FT Aura 5 in any application that is stock, that these pins are towards the back of the plane and these connectors are towards the front of the plane. 
Included in our FT Aura 5 is some double-sided foam. Now it's really important whenever we mount this foam that you make sure it has good adhesion to the bottom of the plate. If it doesn't mount well or it's been used a couple times and this falls off, your plane is going to fly funny and possibly even crash. Also, one, another option for mounting is also to put a couple of drops of hot glue on the corners and to mount your plate in. When mounting the FT Aura 5, we also want to make sure that we mount it nice and square inside the body and that also it's flat. That's one reason why we had this whole cutout as well. So for mounting this, I'm going to place a drop of glue and again my glue is set to low temperature on all four corners. And then I'm going to place it right down in. Now while I'm holding this in place, I'm going to make sure that it's nice and flat and that each side of the FT Aura 5 is parallel with the side plates. Another nice thing about mounting your FT Aura 5 in this way is we have easy access to all of our servo connections and we also have access to the bind and trim mode. These bind and trim buttons are going to be incredibly useful for doing different features like quick set and also binding our plane and establishing our trim. Now that we have our FT Aura 5 glued in, our last step is to basically just route our wires, but also mount our satellite receiver, which is right here, in a way that's going to give us the best reception possible. Now you can see that we have a nice long cord here. I'm just going to wrap this around my finger and kind of coil this up. And I'm going to place this right here on the bottom. Taking my utility knife, I'm going to cut two little slices on both sides right where the bevel is. Now I can press this down and I can pull our antennas through on both sides, just like you see here. Having both sides of our antenna out and exposed this way is gonna give us the best range possible. If you wanna optimize it even more, you can simply tape back one of your whiskers to 90 degrees and that's gonna give you true diversity. At this point, our control module is now done. We're ready to move on to the next step of our build project and that's installing it into the airplane.